You've been playing for some time now, and you're ready to buy your first ship. Let's say that it's a medium transporter. You're going big on the first one. And forget miners. You want to be Space Bezos. So you select the hull, and now you get all these options to choose from. You've got three different engines, and not sure what they do yet. The choice in shield generators at least seems pretty straightforward. You even get a few turrets to choose from. But before you buy, you realize there is another wharf on the other end of the galaxy. This Alliance of the Word station. Selling the same Mercury Vanguard, which is where you want it to be anyways. So you instead decide to buy from there, and... That's a lot more options. Maybe now is a good time to figure out what all those differences are. So let's get started working our way from the top down. You have three different engines, all around combat and travel. All around is supposed to be your middle ground, and it kind of is, but its big advantage is that it's cheap. Combat is when you want to go fast at normal speed. Travel is when you want to go fast at travel speeds. But the most noticeable differences are in boost duration and travel time spool up. If we hold down the boost key, you'll see that the travel drives burn through the shields the fastest. Then the all around. And finally the combat ones will last you the longest. When it comes to activating your travel mode, the combat engines are instant. All around, not too far behind. But travel engines have to wait a full three seconds. There is a way around it where you boost while letting your drive spool up, so when it activates, you're already going at speed. Your AI pilots won't do this, though. This is a player-only mechanic. But what about the racial differences between engines? If you remember, the Alliance of the Word offered a different engine for each race, so what is that difference? Well, we could go through the encyclopedia, and if you want the hard numbers, that is where you'll find it. But the presentation is very... functional. Let's try something different and see how that works. First up are the Argon engines. These are all about travel speeds. Put these on your scout ships and you'll get the highest kilometers per second. Which is weird that their discoverer isn't the fastest ship around. That spot goes to the Pegasus instead. But for any of your ships, if your primary concern is straight line travel speeds, then the Argon engines are a good choice for that. Paranet engines are very good. Before the expansions, a lot of players considered them the best. They are also the only Commonwealth engines that give a boost duration bonus. It's a small bonus, but a few seconds here and there can help. Paranet engines, however, don't scale well as the ship gets bigger. Speed is not determined by just what engines you have installed, but also how heavy the ship is. As the mass of the ship increases, these engines have a harder time pushing it, so you'll see lower returns as the size goes up. But on the other end are the Talati, whose engines do scale well as the ship gets bigger. These are all about moving a multi-ton vessel across a sector at speed, and then stopping before it crashes into an asteroid or station. They even get a little boost to travel speed acceleration to help move them along. Which makes sense, as they are the economic race, all about their miners and traders. Before we continue with the split, we need to bring up their MK4 combat engines. If a combat engine is what you want, the Xyarth Patriarchy has the best you can get, but it is very expensive. It will cost more than the ship you put it on, because you can easily double, if not triple, the size of your fleet by using MK3s instead, it is not at all an efficient option. But for a ship that you use all the time, your own personal craft, go ahead to a Xyarth Wharf and treat yourself. You probably have that thing modded out anyways. If you have the spare credits, give yourself the best that money can buy. Now if we see how split engines compare to the other races, you'll see that they went all in for speed, but only at normal speeds. Their travel mode is slow. Very slow. Yet the split are all about extreme, so this fits very well with them. With Terran engines, you'll notice that things are different. First thing to mention is their boost duration bonus. That only applies to combat engines. For all around and travel, it is the same as everyone else. 
The other is how fast they can accelerate, meaning they are very good at making micro warp jumps, making short bursts, even in combat, to move to wherever they are needed. Where you will really notice this is in large ships. They can move their destroyers around a battlefield faster than anyone else. Electus made two videos highlighting the Terran engine's strengths. I'll link it in the description if you want to check it out. He mostly does modding for X4, but every once in a while he'll release a video. If you like what he does, don't forget to hit that like button. Such a little thing goes a long way in keeping creators motivated to continue making content. Moving on to shields, and it's very simple. There is no rock, paper, scissors mechanics with different damage types. No crazy velocity based shielding. You get hit and the shield stops it until it runs out. And then the hole takes over. Then you die. There are weapons that will bleed through shields, but there is no counter to this. Your only option is to just not get hit. Small and medium shields have a recharge delay, but large and extra large shields do not, so keep that in mind when going over the faction differences. But before we do, we have to bring up Terran shields. They are the only ones that offer MK3 shields for all ships. The other races only have it for the small version. Those are very expensive, but if you want the best in slot, then you're going to need the Terran ones. Looking at Argon shields, they're fairly generic. Pretty even stats across the board. You can't go wrong putting this on pretty much anything. Paranid shields are focused on recharge, making them very good for fighters that use hit and run attacks. They do suffer a bit on the larger ships as they can't make use of their good recharge delay, but the exceptional recharge rate does help to counteract that. If your tactics revolve around hitting hard and fast, then Talati shields will be good for you. They have the highest upfront shield hit points to survive an alpha strike, but don't have the recharge rate for a prolonged engagement. This is your go-to generator if you like seeing really big numbers on your stat sheet. Now split shields I am not a fan of. They take the concept of hit and run to an extreme that I don't think actually works anymore. Plus on large ships, they are better than nothing, but definitely the worst. The extra integrity helps the generator survive, but I don't think it's enough to counteract its weaknesses. Terran shields are much like the Argon in that they're pretty average. This is another generator you can put on everything and not really worry about. What weaknesses it has is easily compensated by its strengths. And finally, we're at turrets. But before we talk about the faction differences, we need to talk about laser turrets. They are garbage. All turrets deal less damage than their MK1 counterparts, but that is because they're on a swivel mount and don't suffer from overheating. It's a balancing mechanic. But laser turrets deal way less damage. This gun didn't get hit by the nerf bat. It got smashed by the hammer. 24 damage. That is so bad. Unless you bring a hundred of them. With that many guns, it doesn't matter how little damage it does. You're just drowning them under weight of fire. Now I'm not going to talk about what each weapon does. I already have a video for that if you want to check it out. The link will be in the description. But I will talk about flak turrets as they are only available as a turret. Keep in mind you can only buy them from the Argon or the Split. The Argon version has a higher rotation rate and range, while the Split will fire faster and hit harder. As the name suggests, they do well as an anti-fighter weapon, but because they do splash damage, they're also good against destroyers by hitting the hull and surface elements with the same shot. So they are kind of an anti-everything weapon. But you can only get them for medium slots, so don't expect them to hit that hard against the bigger ships. When it comes to the rest of the turrets, their stats are handled differently depending on whether they are medium or large. All large turrets share the same base stats dependent on the gun, which are then modified by the faction differences. 
Medium turret stats are also dependent on the gun, but they don't have any modifiers applied to it aside from integrity and rotation speed. Why those are the only things that changed, I have no idea. And it does seem kinda weird that Egosoft did this, but it is what it is. So let's get to what those differences are by starting with the Argon. Range and rotation speed. That is all they care about. Most importantly, the rotation speed, as this makes them the best choice for medium turrets as it completely negates its other shortcomings. Paranid turrets are what you put on your siege destroyers. That extra range means you can bombard a station using your large plasmas without fear of return fire. They have a lower sustained damage over time, so they will suffer in fleet engagements, but they will still be effective, just not optimal. I don't understand the purpose of Talati turrets. Sure, they have a high fire rate, but the actual shots deal the least damage. It looks like they were going for a balanced approach, but the spread is all weird. Definitely my least favorite. If charging into battle is your thing, then this is what split turrets are designed to do. You don't bring these for a long, drawn-out siege. Instead, these turrets throw out as much damage as they can, as fast as they can, and hope that the enemy breaks before you do. So your standard split battle tactic, just pure insanity. Terrans are a special case in that they don't have any heavy-hitting equivalent to the plasma turret. They only have access to beams, pulses, and bolts. They rely on their destroyer's main guns to do all the heavy lifting, and the turrets are there to quickly take out anything that gets close. Their racial bonuses reflect this, and I think they do a good job with what they're designed to do. So there we go, a quick overview of the faction differences with these three pieces of equipment. Hopefully after watching this video, you'll know which options are right for you when buying from the Alliance of the Ward or putting together your own ships from wharfs and shipyards. I do like how Egosoft made these little distinctions to make the races feel unique. They are just stat modifiers, but sometimes that is all you need. But before we go, if you liked the video or found this helpful, please give a click to all the good buttons at the bottom and share so that more people can see it. Until next time, fly safe.